Welcome back everybody. So, well, we're scrapping. <laughs> Scrap's still up, so Senior and I have been down here. We used to have a big pile of stuff just on the other side of the scraggly tree, and we've pretty much punched a hole right through it. So, there's some, well, there's a bunch of stuff here. We haven't scrapped in probably 20 years, I bet. So, we got a lot of heavy stuff right here. This is going to be a heavy load. A lot of junk. Just, oh my gosh, it's, it's scrap. But... This is kind of, if you drew a line, imaginary line about right here, all this stuff to the right is my stuff. That stuff to the left is all seniors. Most of this is an old McCormick Deering 1020 chassis that, oh man, we got this back when I was a kid. And I just finally came to the conclusion several years ago the thing was not worth saving. And I had taken parts and pieces of it down to the Lasseur swap meet for about three years in a row. So sold a few things off of it. You know, I had a pretty decent PTO with cast iron guard, sold that, got the cylinder head gone, the clutch, uh, manifolds, kind of stuff like that. But the rest of it was just junk. So, well, I finally conked it over the head the other day and well, that's most of it in the pile right there. And then the big cast iron frame tub portion, I very unceremoniously took a sledgehammer to it last night and whittled that down into manageable pieces. So we can get that in the back of the truck. You can see the old radiator top there, the radiator sides, scavenge the core out of it. There's the core right there, along with some other stuff. That's going to go in a separate load. Axle tubes, um, front I-beam for the, uh, the steering. This is neat. This was the right rear hub. You can see these used to be steel wheels, and then somebody had went and welded, well, they cut the steel rims off and welded them to these, um, these pneumatic rims and so they weren't worth saving at all anyhow but i don't know how they did it you can see we got a heck of a brazing line that goes down through here where they had completely broke all that out at one point in time and you can see another brazing line goes down below and up the other side i don't know how you'd break a heavy cast hub in two places like that but they managed you know it was just kind of the state of the whole tractor wasn't really worth saving belt pulley drive there rip down the transmission that's the gearbox there's only one piece i'm going to save it's underneath this old piece of tin siding that is the main oh we'll call it bull gear differential gear that's the differential housing assembly there the side the pinions and the side gears and everything in there great big hyatt bearings it's really covered in grease now but it has a lot of the neat old circle c ihc logos on it interesting cast webbing i like how they attached or affixed the outer gear to the in, uh, center cast hub they drilled half through each and then peened over like four big pins to act as rivets kind of secure that for good to me that's just industrial art right there i'm going to clean it up i know there's a way i can display that somehow it's just way too cool of a piece just to completely throw away so that's probably going to be the only part of the 1020 that survives but I've been talking enough. You can see Senior, he's already loading, so I'm gonna yell that here if we don't get busy, right? Another break in the action I want to show you guys these are some Ellis Chalmers M crawler idlers and these are more that have just been built up like crazy all of the weld on those things it's just it's unreal this one really takes the cake here it's almost like they wore this outer rim completely off you look at here it's like they've completely replaced that whole thing with weld I've never seen weld gobbed onto an idler as thick as this is just insane yeah see they're supposed to have this open rib in the center 
I'm pretty sure they uh, they pretty much lost it on here because they just went and just completely filled that in with weld, made it solid again. I'm just trying to count the passes that are on here. It's just, I don't even know how long that took. It's crazy. Alright, so we're loaded out with both the pickups. I have most of a McCormick Daring 1020 back here, minus the engine, of course. And, well, I'm just starting to touch the bumpers on the overloads, and the silver truck is about level. When the silver truck's about level, I usually have around 2,000 pounds back here. The most I've ever had on a scrap run was 2,600 about three weeks ago. I don't think I have that now, but I'm betting I have at least two. We got Senior's truck loaded as well. He has just a lot more general steel. It's an old John Deere A engine frame, an old hacked up C frame off of a blade off of an Alice crawler, some John Deere hammer mill parts. I mean, old nasty angle drive gearboxes, stripped out Farm All H wheel hub, just stuff like that. And he's loaded about the same, but he's got more box in front of the back axle, which is going to transfer more to the front axle. I'd say he's probably 2,500 right here easy. Well, I guess we'll find out tomorrow, right? So the scrap yard we're going to has not really been conducive to getting trailers in lately because scraps up, everybody's been hauling. It's been so jam packed full. It's been kind of tight maneuvering around in there. So we're just taking the pickups and it's an hour drive each way. So we'll get going early in the morning with these two. I have at least one more truckload ready on the ground. I want to also haul tomorrow as long as I have time to do it. So the goal is to get back, get that loaded, and get back up there before they quit accepting at like 2.30 or 3 in the afternoon. So catch back up with you tomorrow. Okay, we made it, so I gotta hop in Senior's truck because I'm the unloader. Bayside Recycling in Duluth. I used to spot rail cars on the back side of this back in the railroad days. Stop here and get weighed and they'll tell us what to do. See those rail cars? That's where I used to work. So now we park on the scale and they'll weigh us empty and we figure out how much we just offloaded.
What'd you say you had then? Just for weight. 2,820. Okay, I bet 25 on that one. So that was a little light. Let's see what I got. And senior found an operator to talk to. <laughs> All right, back off of the scale, and it turns out Squatch was lightweight today, 1,900 pounds. I thought I'd have at least 2,000, but it's all right. So, Senior's blasting off now. I'm about to blast off. It's a race back home to see who can uh, get there first, right? Okay, made it back home, had some lunch, and loaded up again. So this is the final truckload of the day. This is the last of my stuff that I had ready and well some old bud wheels in there some lock ring wheels that aren't going to fit anything some old culvert sections there's a little bit of fluff down in the bottom right there that was uh, some crap we dug out from the access road to my backfield those old track frames that i featured in a video where the um, the rollers and everything and wore clean through yeah you can see right there i don't know if you guys remember that or not but pop a link there for you Old flogged out, locked up Cat 22 idler that I'm not even sure how I ever got because I don't, I've never had 22 stuff, but yeah, it's going. Those old John Deere uh, combine hybrid caterpillar track harvester frames, I torched all those up there in here. Another old stripped out IH back wheel hub, more old rims, an old Farm All H transmission top cover. Got a last couple of flogged out D2 drive sprockets down there. Farmall H axle housing. There's no John Deere H axle housing in there too. An old D2 radiator top that's shot, but it always it always pays to have something that says Caterpillar. So when they come out and doo -doo -doo, I'm going to look at the load. Ooh, Caterpillar. They've even commented on that before. So yeah, marketing. That's marketing, man. And then some old worn out, hacked up, cutting edge bits, and yeah, just kind of an assortment of stuff like that and I can tell by the way the truck's sitting I've got more weight on this trip on this load than I did last time we're a little bit lower back here a little bit harder on the overloads I had 1900 last time with it level we're about like that I'll guess 2200 right here and I think I might be a little bit conservative on that let's find out we'll go back to town and do it all over again all right so we're back home and I was a little light again. 2,040 pounds is all we had on that. Man, I thought there would have been more than that the way it was down in the back, but that's what it ended up being. So, well, we got our scrap mesh cleaned up and yeah, it just so happens that the higher scrap price has coincided with the same time of year that I need to be out running like a crazy person, just getting stuff done outside and working on the field. We're knocking on Memorial Day weekend here this coming weekend and I'm only a month behind where I thought I'd be at this point. So. I've probably got, oh, off the top of my head, maybe 20,000 more pounds of scrap that I could prep that, you know, is stuff that I'm not attached to and don't need. The problem is I've got everything hauled that I had prepped. And I've hauled, it's just north of 11,000 pounds in the last few weeks. So I haven't made a dent in it. But we're going to have to knock off the scrapping for now because I need to start getting busy doing that field work. But one more thing I need to address today before I can do anything else. Old blue broke down. Yeah, I went to uh, leave for work the other morning and turned the key on. Just kind of had a funny buzzing noise behind the dash and the lights like flickered on, went off, and then it was dead. And I was pretty sure I knew what it was. So, popped the hood and 
pretty common failure point on these vehicles in high corrosion states is this heavy power cable right here goes into this non-insulated non-sealed junction block and there's some ring terminals that feeds kind of this see here this double lead and then a fusible link in there and that powers most everything in behind the dash as well as the body control module the gym module all that stuff everything that needs to be alert and be aware and sense things to make this thing decide to start and run i've seen this failed before on other vehicles and this has only been green for about five years so i'm not sure why it quit on me now but yeah we need to we need to fix that we need to renew the continuity on that circuit so because i can't have old blue out of the game i tell you what it's like seeing a friend with a broken leg but once again we broke down in the driveway so the luck streak continues right all right so a few minutes later we've got it repaired those are the two bad ends and it's funny time after time even though these corrode so badly that the end just falls right off you snip the wire right behind it and it's nice clean fresh copper yet so down in here we're gonna abandon this little box that they used to run through because that's just a corroded nasty mess anyway so we have copper lug terminal on each side Oop. each one has been soldered and shrink tubed in place we'll get the rest of that convolute around there and since this is going to be a hot circuit we are also going to um, shield that so they can't just go and ground against things and there we are have some convoluted tubing on the outside of that taped up secured to the old block so it can't fall down well let's give it a shot huh you can do it old blue <laughs> got him back of course, oh yeah, I had a CD in there. Back to FM. All right, set the clock. We'll get all this stuff figured out. Okay, so decided to take Old Blue for a little bit of a field trip. And yeah, we'd whip back here. We're gonna do some work. All this stuff down to the dirt work area down there, I'm gonna mow. So I've been kind of mowing this out to the road and i'm just gonna mow this part of the field here because it doesn't make good hay anymore anyway but where we ripped all of that next thick nasty brush out of here last year i want to mow this as well and this has gotten way too far ahead of me because i've been distracted by shiny and rusty things too much lately the problem is there were some rocks and sticks in here from when i spread the topsoil back on that are still on the surface and I'd hate to get a lawnmower in here and hit that stuff. So the first mowing out here is going to be with the weed whip and it looks like a bigger area than it is on camera. I can bang that out probably in an hour and then that'll expose all the debris I need to pick off the top. Once I get that clean, then I can just bring the lawnmower out here and do it the fast way. So that is the plan for this evening and should be able to get that done before dark. Already over on the members channel, I had one commenter say, uh, yeah, I'm surprised you're using the Silver Diva truck to haul scrap and you're not using Old Blue. Well, not, not only did Old Blue not run, but I haven't used Old Blue to haul scrap ever. And well, the main reason is, you check out this body line right here. You can see how the cab and the box aren't exactly on the same plane anymore. The box is a little bit bouncy. That's because, thanks to the road salt, if we pick up the bed mat here, you see Old Blue doesn't really have much of a floor left in it <laughs> anymore. Um, look up here at the front. Yeah, you see that bolt up there? That's that's where the, the floor of the bed used to be. That's the cab bolt and the spacer before everything just decided to give out. So, yeah, we're not hauling much for cargo on the back of Old Blue anymore. If it's too heavy for the mat, it's too heavy for old blue, so half my scrap would have fall, fallen right out on the road. So that's the reason for that. Dang road salt, I tell you. So, all right, everybody, I'm gonna get busy out here, and then I still wanna throw this video together yet tonight. Maybe get to bed before midnight. We'll see, gotta keep moving because those little black fly gnats out here now. So if it's not one form of pestilence, it's another, right? Thanks for watching, everybody.